Hi, this is me, Gitte Larsen, your financial management lecturer at the Academy in Calling. Um, this video is a how-to video on how to calculate and set up the liquidity budget in the model called the indirect model. So this is not a video explaining liquidity budgets in general, uh, the purpose, etc. So this is a how-to video. Um, and let me just, yeah, all right. So just quickly, the liquidity budget will show the effects of the an activity that is planned from a company from a cash point of view. And, and basically it shows the company's ability to pay for planned activities and short-term payments. More of that when we come in class and, and talk about liquidity budgets, uh, budgets. Um, why liquidity and cash is so important for companies to focus at, etc. We have two models that you are being taught this semester uh, in how to set up a liquidity budget, a cash flow budget. The first one in this video uh, is called the indirect uh, model. So the indirect model is also referred to as shifting asset model or change in financial position. And then the second one is called the direct cash flow. So here I will show you the template. This is in general the template for how to make the liquidity budget in the indirect model, the shifting asset model here. So basically what we will do is we will pay attention to all accounts that somehow is tarrying up liquidity throughout a budget period. So we are, uh, yeah, we take, we start, the beginning point is a profit before depreciations or earning contributions from the income statement budget that we have made. And then we take a look at our expectations to what is going to happen on stock, the inventory of the company. Is it going to increase or decrease? We do the same with, yeah, it's called debtors, it's accounts receivable, accounts payable here. We do it with other uh, um, uh, payable debts that we might have and change in short term liabilities overall. And then we have in between calculations on the cash flow effect of that change in these in these accounts. Then we um, acknowledge what plans the company has made for investments uh, or sell of any assets that the company has in position. And then if we are going to uh, take a new loan, if the company is going to take a new loan, or even if they're going to repay loans, having interest payments, etc. Et so overall, what we do is we take a look at the plans that the company has made and the liquidity cash flow effect that this has of the company's cash flow. So examples that we are going to take a look at is, as I said, stock, debtors is called accounts receivable, creditors, accounts payable, investments, bank loan, interest expenses, salaries, depreciations, all of these kinds of things. To do the calculations for our um, stock and accounts receivable and accounts uh, payable, we need to take a step back uh, in previous semester stuff where we took a look at turnover ratios for these different accounts. So if you remember turnover ratios basically could be translated as how many times a year does, does how many times a year do we turn over the stock, how many times a year do we get paid from our accounts receivable, how many times a year do we pay our suppliers, do we pay our uh, accounts payable. So we use that turnover ratio to calculate the new value of these different accounts. So the new value of the account stock or inventory is calculated by saying the materials costs found in the budget for the income statement for the current year, for the following year, sorry, or basically the variable cost could be cost of goods sold depending on the type of company divided by the turnover ratio uh, of stock of materials, a uh, stock of raw materials, uh, 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 yeah, products in, per, in, uh, in process, et cetera, et cetera. So that is how we use these different turnover ratios to calculate these different uh, kinds of uh, uh, end values of these accounts, all right? So pay attention to, take a look at previous semester stuff, take a look at videos, regarding what these turnover ratios are and how they are calculated. So I have made four steps in how to make a liquidity budget. You know, I like to work in steps. So the beginning point is, as I said, the profit and loss 
the profit and loss, the income statement, the budget for the uh, for the year that we are trying to to, pl uh, to plan. So we, the starting point here would be the earning contribution of that, or the EBITDA, or the profit before interest and tax and depreciations. So the company will start by estimate the balance. You know that we can see the financial situation, belongings and, and liabilities of the company in the balance. So they, at the end of the year, or at least at the end of, of fourth quarter, will estimate where do they believe that the balance is going to end at the current year. So they start with estimating the balance sheet of the current year just like they estimated an income statement for the current year before making the profit and loss or income statement budget. Then they look at the budget assumptions for liquidity and balance because those two are closely linked. So they take a look at the assumptions for turnover ratios, take a look at assumptions for new investments, take a look at assumptions for repayment of loans, etc., cetera, et cetera. Uh, And they set these assumptions. Then they calculate the values of first these is uh, accounts where we tie up the capital, okay? So we tie up capital in stock or inventory, in, in accounts receivable or in creditors. Uh, and then the following year, we calculate and take a look what is the effect uh, from a cash point of view of that end result. So that might be uh, that you have increased the, um, the value of the stock that is negative from a cash point of view because you have now tied up capital in the stock instead of having freed capital from the stock. If you tie up capital in your accounts receivable, that is negative from a cash point of view as well. On the other side, we have if you tie up or if you are allowed to increase your debt to your suppliers, that is positive for the cash flow. You get to keep your cash instead of paying off your debt. From a cash point of view, that is good. So, and then we calculate, do all of these in between calculations and find the liquidity in the year, all right? Now, video is running. I know I only have 15 minutes, so I might end up making a part one and a part two. Then you must pay attention to that as well. All right, so let's jump into Excel like we always do and look at the example that I have set up, uh, an example that I have borrowed from the book uh, of uh, uh, Lona Hansen. Uh, with more on financial management for the Academy Profession Program. So this is the example from that book, uh, second edition, page 275. So first of all, as I said, the company must uh, pay attention to an estimated balance uh, for the current year, all right? So if I scroll down here, you will see that here, North Lightning or Norlys, has estimated their balance sheet, the accounts on the balance sheet, all of their belongings, what they own, what they have invested in, the capital that they have tied up, and how they have a raised capital to, to finance these things. So this is an estimated balance. Estimated means it hasn't happened yet, but this is where they believe that they are going to end. That's the starting point. And then we need the budget. So the budget for the upcoming period uh, that they have made so far for the income statement or the profit and loss. Now, this is also from the, the book uh, of uh, Luna Hansen, the uh, budget for the income statement uh, for all these A's. So the number we need, the starting point, now let me just move the video here a little. The number we need, the starting point for the liquidity budget for all these A's is, as I said, the operating profit. All right, and I. All right, so I'm still recording. I was just checking. So the starting point would be the operating profit that you will find in the income statement in the budget for the income statement uh, that the company has made so far. Now, here it says 501, but just let me just to make sure that you know what I mean. The equal sign. Go pick up the number from the earning contribution, the operating profit here for 2019, that's the beginning point. Now, all of the values that you will need for the opening balance or for the opening accounts, for the opening value here, you will find in the estimated balance. So what we're going to do here is that we're going into the balance sheet, the estimated balance sheet, to find the values of these different accounts. So first, let's find the change or the stock of raw materials. 
the value of the stock of raw material at the beginning of the parent, uh, current year, at the uh, budgeted year. So here, stock of raw materials, 165,000. So let's go up and check that it is here. So change of work in progress. Go ahead and find work in progress. We have an account that we call work in progress, meaning they are not finished items yet. So we have a stock of finished item down into the estimated balance sheet and find that account of finished products, finished items, all right? And debtors that I prefer to call accounts receivable is also from the balance sheet down here, 465,000. So basically I'm not doing anything, I'm just getting the numbers from the estimated balance sheet. So supplier credit, we have to take a look on the other side of the company. Here we're looking into the, uh, to the liabilities and um, uh, yeah, suppliers, sorry, debt to suppliers here, 102,000 as, as the beginning point. And let me just check what I have here. Change to other short term debt. So let's go into the balance sheet. We're still in the liabilities. Short term debt here is in 132,070. All right, I need to check uh, the video length at the moment. So, one of the steps that I mentioned in the introduction was the budget assumptions, all right? So here the, the budget assumptions for the liquidity budget has been set. So the company has estimated that 15 times a year they turn over um, their raw materials. Oh, let me just check. Something went wrong here. Um, this is uh, the turnover ratio for stock of raw materials. Now let me just switch this. Uh, something went not right here. So let me just check my own numbers here. Sorry. So my turnover ratio is here. 15, 24, 20, 26, and 24 accounts payable creditors. Yes. So that's the mistake. Sorry about that. That's the thing with my videos. I make mistakes and I correct them I'll, as I do the video. So these are the budget assumptions. Now, we can talk about how these have occurred. They might have been calculated from the old numbers or it, these are assumptions that the company has set. All right, so we need those assumptions to calculate the new values of, let's start with the change of stock for raw, for raw materials. Now, stock of raw materials, we need to take a look at what number in the income statement is relevant for the stock of raw materials. Now that these stock of or these raw materials are materials that we use in production. Therefore, the relevant number for us to be looking at would be cost of materials. So that's the raw materials that the company is using uh, and, and therefore have them on stock. Now they have not been used yet because this is the stock of raw materials. So total stock of raw materials divided by and the formula was divided by the turnover ratio for stock of raw materials. So, and that's the calculation. So what we will end up with is that if the company is turning over the stock of raw materials 15 times a year on an average, they will end with the stock of raw materials uh, at 155,500. Now, their initial um, beginning point now that might disturb you here, so let me just change this. The initial starting point for the company was that they had 165,000 of value at the stock of raw materials. Now they have 155,500. So they have decreased their stock of raw materials. From a cash point of view, that is positive. Remember that. So what we do here is we take the opening and subtract the end value positive influence on the stock of raw materials. I will now pause this video and continue in part two.